Hey, what's up all you pirates and samurai out there? I'm Deuce Diz Din, and I'm coming at you with another chapter review of One Piece. With this, there's only five more chapters until chapter 1000. Yes, I cannot wait, but hold pause. Time for this chapter, chapter 995, titled Okunoichi's Oath. As we have a new cover page, we're back to requests. As the request is, Luffy tries to study but gets bored right away, which is a very Luffy thing to do. So, you know, it's nice. Gang Beige's story is done. It's over with. We dealt with it long enough. We're back to requests. Hopefully, we get some color pages soon. Definitely for chapter 1000, which is so weird to say 1000 chapters of a manga. Oh, man. Man. But let's jump into the actual story as we pick up on the outskirts of Onigashima as Big Mom is going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Marco who knows that he has to do what he can to hold off Big Mom. Like, just like everybody else has been saying, this is a situation where we're trying to deal with Kaido, not Big Mom. Big Mom opens up a whole nother issue altogether by having her here. So Marco is doing his best to keep Big Mom at bay, going up against Prometheus. Prometheus is struggling to go up against Marco. Big Mom's just like, wait, how am I losing against fire with fire? And Marco's just like, yeah, well, my fire's a little bit different. It's got a little bit of that blue blood behind it. So, yeah. But then, in comes Big Mom just grabbing Marco out of nowhere. Like, she's just like, you know what, enough of this. Boom! Grabs him by the neck. Like, literally got him by the neck. And holds him down, and she's just like, yeah, Pero Sparrow, gank this bitch. And Pero Sparrow's off to the side with a candy arrow. I'm not sure if it's coated with hockey or not, or that's just the properties of the candy. Might just be the properties of the candy. And, you know, Pero Sparrow kind of laments the fact that he's just like, well, I was originally trying to team up with you, but that doesn't seem like an option. And, honestly, I've always kind of wanted to kill you, but at the same time, not like this. Not like this. Oh, well. Sorry, Marco. And before he can do anything, boom, in comes Wanda and Carrot in Sulong form. Wanda's using her sword to slash against per across Pero Sparrow's face one way, and Carrot using her claws to scratch across Pero Sparrow's face the other way. So Pero Sparrow has this massive series of gashes all across his face. He's just like, oh god, not you again! Because he's like, it's the Sulongs again. It's the straight up Sulongs. And, you know, even Big Mom's just like, ah, damn, Sulongs! Coming in to get their revenge on Pero Sparrow, as Carrot identifies him as the one who killed Pedro. But, yo, know, Pero Sparrow's just like, dude, he blew himself up! You're taking it up with the wrong guy! But, Carrot is resolute, as Pero Sparrow was the reason why Pedro killed himself. So, you know, regardless, they want his blood. They want him dead. And, you know, we have a brief exchange between Marco and Carrot, where, you know, Carrot identifies Marco as one of a friend of you know, Cat Viper, Nekamomushi. So it's just like, okay, we're allies, we're joined up, we're cool. Um will take on Pero Sparrow as Big Mom goes racing back into Onigashima is just like, look, I don't have time for all this personal bullshit y'all got going on here. Y'all want to hash out your issues? Hash out your issues. Marco, if you want to kill me, they'll have to do it another time. I don't have all the soul weaponry to be sparing on your ass. So it's hard to tell if she's running away because she doesn't have the resources to take on Marco or because she feels like like, she doesn't want to waste her resources on um, Marco. You know, then again, she also unleashed a whole series of homies in Onigashima, so it's hard to tell, you know, ultimately what she's going after. As the place that she's running towards has all the ice onis breaking out. And Marco's just like, what's going on here? But Marco being here might be a very lucky thing. Because of the fact that he has his restorative 
Phoenix Fire, so he might be the key in stopping the Ice Onis. You know, it really makes you wonder. He's a doctor after all. So, Marco teams up with Chopper. They take down the Ice Oni virus. Bada boom! Speaking of which, we enter the performance floor inside the dome. You know, Zoro is doing his best to take down Apu. People are screaming at him left and right. Oh, we're on your side. Give us the antibodies. Apu's just like, yeah, no. Uh, I feel like I'll die if I do that. There's way too much hostility coming out of here. Y'all harsh in my mellow. Uh, I'm not giving the antibodies to anyone. I don't want to die. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, he's attacking people left and right with his scratch abilities, but, you know, out of nowhere in comes both Zoro and Drake. And they're just like, give us the antibodies, you bastard! And Apu has no choice but to whip out his tonfas in order to clash with both Zoro and Drake. Which, you know, it's really showing that Apu ain't no slouch. The fact that he's able to tangle with the two of them at the same time and hold his own? Like, dude. And Zoro's just like, you, dude, I do not feel like dealing with you. I'm trying to get up there and help Kid him on. You just delaying me left and right. And Drake's just like, and I just hate you. So it's just like, and Apu's just like, yeah, dude, you know, feelings mutual, asshole. Meanwhile, Queen's just like, ah, oh, that Drake bastard, you know, showing you true colors. I knew you were no good. You're never gonna be, you're gonna be a punk just like your father. <laughs> and. You know, Queen's just inspecting the wanted posters of the Straw Hat crew. It's just like, and that other guy's uh, Roranora Zoro. Ooh, better take out, you know, the um, Straw Hat's right hand, right and left hand men. So he's just like, okay, so they also have Vin Smoke Judge's son amongst their group, huh? Which, you know, begs the question, what significance does that play? There's, there's obviously going to be something coming into play because of that, so... It makes me wonder if, you know, Queen wants to go after Sanji now because of the technology of the Germa Kingdom. Despite the fact that Sanji has no real connection with the Germa Kingdom. <laughs> it's just his last name. He just has the last name in the raid suit. That's it. But they've easily identified him as Vin Smoke Sanji, despite the fact that he doesn't really go by that last name. We also come to find out that Brook is immune to the plague bullets because he doesn't have all the necessary organs like skin and blood and all that to actually turn him into an ice oni so he's just like oh maybe i'm invincible but this actually causes chopper to realize something how the ice bullets work the, the way that they don't work on brook gives him reason to believe that okay maybe there's another way that this this virus works but before he can really think it through robin alerts him that he has been contaminated his hand is transforming into an ice oni so maybe chopper's out of the picture maybe it's all going to be up to marco to settle this whole situation maybe that will be a sore spot for chopper oof that could be something Okay, and then we switch over to the showdown between Page One, um, Ulti, and versus Nami and Usopp. And it is very obvious that Usopp has been put through the ringer. He tries to get Ulti caught up in his Green Star Devil, which is a Venus flytrap. Page One easily gets her out of there. And then Ulti comes, you know... You know, before they can actually go after him, he sends out the bamboo javelins that seem to pierce both Page One and Ulti, but they manage to just shrug that attack off easily, and Ulti comes in with her Ulti Mortar, which just bashes Usopp in the face. It's pretty obvious she's been just spamming that attack, because her, her just, she's just been headbutting both Usopp and Nami in the face, because you see Nami on the floor, bleeding from her forehead, so it's obvious she's been on the receiving end of that ulti mortar multiple times. Page one goes after um, Nami. You know, oh no, it's actually ulti who goes after Nami. You know, with Nami saying, I surrender, I've lost, please don't hurt me. 
and Ulti wants satisfaction, because, you know, when she was dealing with Luffy, it's just like, yeah, I heard your bitch of a captain say he's going to be king of the pirates instead of Kaido, and Nami's just like, no, please, I'm sorry, you know, don't believe him, you know, no more headbutts, please, I'm begging you, but Ulti's just like, fine, I'll let you go. If you say, my captain will never be king of the pirates. And it's just like, if I didn't know the fact that Ulti is such a petty little shit, I'd be like, the fuck is this? But it's just like, nope, that's perfectly in line with her character. She's just like, yeah, tell me, tell me shit. Tell me your captain ain't shit. Tell me your captain ain't shit. And Usopp's just like, Nami, lie. For the love of God, just lie and we'll be fine. Please, just give her what she wants. It's petty, it's stupid, just get it over with and go about your day. And Luffy and Nami, without missing a beat, is just like, okay, I'll say it. Luffy will never stop until he's king of the pirates. And it's just like, it's this epic moment, but at the same time, it's obvious that she was just telling the truth. It's just like, yeah, he's she, she was trying to work around it, but it's just like, well, he's never gonna stop trying, though. And this just pisses Ulti off, so it's just like, oh, so you do want another fucking headbutt, got it. And now he's just like, no, but it was the truth. And in the last moment, in comes none other than Tama on top of her Como Inu. And it's just like, just the Como Inu just bites on top of Ulti's head, freeing Nami. And she's just running through, just being like, get her, Como Chio! <laughs> And he does, and it's obvious this isn't gonna, like, stop them. You know, Page One's just like, a dog? And, but, you know, Usopp and Nami's just like, Tama, what the fuck are you doing here? And it, 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 that ends the chapter, just chaos, just pandemonium. But it's just like, it was obvious that Tama wasn't gonna be left out of this battle, come on. Like, Tama was gonna join in in some capacity, but it does beg the qu And being with the weakest of the, you know, Straw Hat crew means there's at least lower stakes on their end, because usually when they're going up against people, you know, they're probably the lowest of the low stakes, you know. It's the people that Luffy would e have an easier time taking out. So, if nothing else, Tama's probably at the safest place she could be at Onigashima, because they're, they're usually at the easiest place to just run away from. But... We'll just have to wait and see. Hopefully Tama will be okay, but now people are definitely going to discover what she can do. And that's not going to be a good thing. That's going to be a very bad thing. You know, Tama's going to kind of get outed in terms of her ability. Because, yeah, we had all that time ago where she got captured and they wanted her abilities. So we're just going to have to wait and see. Or maybe she might be able to sway both page one and ulti to their side with her abilities hmm that would be something but hey give me your thoughts and theories in the comment section below if you like this review leave me a like or a dislike depending on how you felt and subscribe and hit the bell icon that way you never miss out on another one piece chapter review this one's gonna come the next one's gonna come out on friday apparently which means i'll be at work so no review immediately but until the following saturday but until then i I've been deuced as then, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.